everyone, and welcome to All the Chug. As you could tell, we have our special guest Otis back today, and we're going to talk about more tripod tips. So we are doing a follow-up video to the tripod care and tips. Uh, since owning Otis, well, he's not mine, but since my parents have owned Otis, we have found some more tips that really help living um, with a tripod, and I want to share those with you. And I really think these videos are important because when I looked online, there's not a lot of uh, like special needs dog instructions. There's a lot out there for normal dogs like Olive, but there's not much for Otis like what can you do to really support your tripod. So we're making a follow-up video today. Olive's gonna probably leave us now just so I can sit up a little better and I can explain these tips with you with Otis right here. Also my last tripod video, which I'll put up here in the iCards. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I would watch that one first. That one is about the basics care, but it's really the best care you can have. Uh, in today's video, we're just really gonna supplement onto that and I'm gonna share some things that I found new that really work with tripod dogs. So the first tip we found was that due to missing a front limb, especially when you put a harness on a dog, it tends to twist because there's not the limb on the left or the right that would hold it into place. So after some careful research, uh, Otis has gotten a new harness now. So this is Otis's harness, it's very tiny, and so I'll come a little closer to show you. So this is what it looks like. And basically, you're opting out for the straps between the legs like normal. Notice it's open on the bottom, this is the bottom. So the head comes out here, and so the front strap is in front of the legs, and this strap down here is more toward the belly, and the legs can stick out the bottom, but there's nothing in between that would rub in the armpit of the dog. But having a strap out front allows them to use their chest to push or pull and have you better control. So if you do decide to pull back, you are less likely to injure the, injure the dog or tip it over because it's the front chest strap, which is also reflective, very cute and very important. And so this strap just buckles right here, right underneath. So the harness that is purchased for Otis is the brand Bolux. This was found on Amazon. Uh, if you are looking for size referencing, if you like this harness, which we do very much, uh, this is a extra small, and Otis is a nine pound Jack Russell Terrier Chihuahua mix. So he's pretty slender and he's pretty small. So this is an extra small and it fits him perfectly, um, but they do give sizing uh, recommendations and so I would recommend using those if you're trying to size up a dog that's much larger or maybe differently shaped than Otis's. The next tip we have is buying a diet that's specific to tripod dogs. And they're not gonna say on the bag, three-legged dog diet, but what they will say is joint support or joint health or something like that. And so having a joint health diet is much helpful and we actually noticed a change with Otis before he was being fed normal dog food much what a mini and olive eat so it was good quality dog food but it was just for regular adult dogs and he was fine he did well but just kind of out of a let's try it and see uh, we switched him to a joint supplemented meat diet and he's actually playing much more. We can see his energy is much better. And so I really do think that's something to consider when you have a three-legged dog. So the one he eats and uses is the Hill Science Diet Healthy Mobility. So that's another keyword to look for, something along the lines of that. So this is the one he eats, but the, there are many other dog food brands that make joint support foods. So find the brand you like. And because this does deal with food and nutrition, um, do a lot of research and consult your vet. You want to make sure you're giving your dog the best food possible. Uh, if you don't want to switch your diet for whatever reason and you want to keep on feeding what you are, they also make joint supplements, which you could also feed your dog as a supplement to their food so that will have the joint support. When playing with a three-legged dog, so for the most part, a three-legged dog is going to play how it's best for him, but sometimes the way you play can influence what happens in return. So to play with a three-legged dog, one thing I would keep in mind is really try to stay linear when you play. So try to play in a straight line. Um, don't do a lot of like back and forth, like sharp turns and jumping because that's a lot on the dog with one limb to kind of rotate and get down and jump and go back and forth short distances. 
Three-legged dogs tend to do best when they can go a little bit of ways or they don't have to turn as often. Straight lines are better for tripod dogs. Additionally, talking about walks. Last time we didn't really talk about walks much other than going shorter distances and having a supportive harness, which is still true. But I would also like to mention that walking on the grass rather opposed to concrete or cement is much, much better. So if you can walk on clay or sand even is much more helpful. Um, but ideally you want to be walking on the grass or on some soft dirt or something like that. Speaking of walking, last time I mentioned having a sling if you have a small dog, but I would also like to mention that they actually make dog strollers. And I know this seems ridiculous, but Otis has a dog stroller, he really does. And it's actually become very, very useful on days where he has to be out quite a while or there's just a lot of movements that might be happening. For example, if you're shopping in a store and you just kind of want to zigzag through aisles, he can go into the stroller and then he's free to zigzag wherever you want because he's up in the stroller. Or you could walk him on a trail and if he starts to get tired and you're not ready to go back yet because you're also exercising, you could pop him in the stroller and continue walking. So strollers have become really useful. Uh, and they also make strollers for large dogs, so I don't want you to think, okay, well, I have a lab that's missing a leg and a stroller for Otis will not fit him. They make large strollers, and I've actually used one at the rescue um, I volunteer at for a lab who had a broken limb, and he was in a stroller built for a 70-pound dog. So they make big strollers. So you can get a stroller for your dog, but I know strollers can be embarrassing for some people, and if it embarrasses you, uh, you could also use a wagon or a cart. I would just recommend, because these are not built for dogs, to be mindful of your pet. So build in some kind of bed or soft bottom for it, put blankets in the bottom, and make sure you tether your dog to the cart or the wagon since it is open. They're probably going to want to jump out. Okay, now car rides. Last time I didn't actually talk about cars, but I think this time it's worth mentioning. And so if you take your dog on a car ride, especially if you have leather seats, a dog that is missing a front limb, again, has more stability problems generally because cars are moving and you're turning and you're speeding up and you're stopping at stoplights. So with driving, you really want to secure your tripod, especially if you're taking it with you. And so one way to do that is get a nice, thick, tall bed um, for the seat if your dog is short because that can raise them up to the window. They don't have to worry about you know trying to climb up there and, and struggle and keep balance. Just get them a nice, tall seat to begin with so they can look up the window and make sure you buy a strap that will strap your dog's harness to the seat belt of the seat it's sitting in. And they do make these, you uh, you could either strap them around the back of like the neck of the car seat or against the seat belt that's there, but they usually strap from there to the dog and that way it keeps it secure. And if you do happen to make a sharp turn, your dog is not falling over. And if you have a large dog in the car, you're gonna do the same thing, just opt out of having the seat there. But I would still recommend actually laying down a blanket, especially again if you have leather car seats because the leather is slippery. So laying down a uh, like a sticky kind of uh, drawer liner and then a, and a towel over that will then help support the dog better and so they have a little more grip in the car and still attach their collar or harness to the seat. I'm gonna remove this real fast. So most beds come with lifted sides. If you bought a dog bed that does not have lifted sides, and you have a tripod dog, go ahead and buy one of those because the bumped out sides actually help support the dog. So if you notice Otis is laying, he's kind of almost just laying on his side. And I'm sure that's not fun to just be laying tipped over all of the time. Um, most dogs wanna be up and engaged and look around. And he will try and do that, but usually then he's twisting his neck and he's trying to like push over. So buying a bed with puffy sides like this, when they do lay in their bed, they can kind of push over to one side and that one will push them up. Alternatively, I also like to have a little blanket bumper. So this is just a, a piece of fleece that was cut from the fabric store. I've rolled it up so it's pretty thick. And what I usually do is I'll, I'll also place it against the side so it creates one side that's much, much thicker, uh, usually on the side where the leg is missing. And so on that thicker side, now he has something to kind of prop himself up on. So basically you're creating a leg where he doesn't have a leg. And so now I'll go ahead and put that back. So right now, he's, he's pretty flat. But, if I put the bumper under, notice he's now upright. He's propped up, and even though right now he's laying down, his body is even and equal. He has his one leg out to the ground like he should, and then the bumper under the missing part, but it's keeping his shoulders in line, his spine in line. He is feeling supported and secure, and that's why I really like having 
bumpers and stuff like that. So remember guys, tripods are not hard to care for. You just have to do a little bit of changing of the routine and everything will be perfectly fine. They're just like normal dogs. So if you see a tripod and you're considering adopting it, do not count it out just because it's missing a leg. Watch this video, watch my last video, feel better about it, and go ahead and bring that dog home because every dog deserves a place to live. All right, so that's today's video. It is Friday. If you wanna see us next week on Friday as well, make sure you subscribe, hit the little ding bell, and if you love Otis, like the video. Bye guys.